Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here once again to continue working on our Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. Today we will be adding Fog and a 3D Skybox into our map. To start off, we load the CSGO SDK under the Tools section on Steam. Once that's opened up, we load Hammer World Editor. To start, we need to construct the 3D Skybox around our existing level. The 3D Skybox contains all of the objects that surround the level. We can see here on the new Inferno that there are hills and valleys with a bunch of trees behind us slightly covered in fog. This is the 3D Skybox for Inferno. If we no clip out of the map, we'll find a little shrunken down representation of what we saw in the distance. This is the 3D Skybox. To start constructing our 3D Skybox, we want to navigate over to the Auto tab on Viz Groups and then uncheck the Sky. This will automatically hide all brushes that have the skybox material applied to them. Since we're building out the 3D skybox, we don't want to see the skybox texture. We now want to build the areas out around our level that will contain our 3D skybox. We build them attached to the map as if they won't be moved and shrunken down. For instance, if I wanted to continue part of this building, I will just start attaching brushes to it and change the texture. Since I want this to appear to be like a skyscraper office building, I'll just nudge this back a little bit. And then I can continue adding more detail. With that built out, after we run the map, it will appear exactly like this in game. I've sped up the actual creation of my 3D skybox. I'm creating some concept brush buildings that will appear to be skyscrapers off in the distance. I create these and then just place them outside my level where I want them to show in game. It's a good idea to group the objects that you create for your 3D skybox together so you can easily select them when you go to scale everything down to the miniature version. Creating the 3D skybox is very much a detail process, meaning you don't want to start doing this until your layout is complete, which we would expect to be done at this point. I like to create simple brush-based representations of buildings and skyscrapers and other things off in the distance for my 3D skybox, and then I'll go back later and detail them up with the rest of the level. I've now completed what will be the concept 3D skybox that I want to have in my level. We see we have these small brick buildings here, along with many general shaped buildings that will be off in the distance. If we come over to B site, I've decided to continue this building upwards into the sky, and I'll leverage my 3D skybox to handle that. I now want to select all of the objects that will be part of my 3D skybox. With all of these objects selected, let's press Ctrl G and group them together. Now we need to create the sky camera for our level. The sky camera is the entity on which we set the 3D skybox settings so the game knows how to draw the 3D skybox around our level. Let's come over to the auto tab again on Viz Groups and uncheck the auto box at the top. This will hide the entire level from our view. Let's zoom in on the origin of the map where we have the green, red, and blue origin point, which is also the teal lines in your 2D views. Select the Entity tool and left-click on the center of those lines. Once we have the crosshair selected, we can right-click and hit Create Object. This will create a new entity in our 2D view directly at the origin of our map. Press Alt-Enter to open the object properties, and we want to change its class to a Sky Camera. The Sky Camera will be a small red box. We now want to check Auto again to uncheck it, and click it once more to bring everything back into the world. Once everything is back, select the sky camera and zoom out. Now select everything else that will be in your 3D skybox. We now need to scale everything down to 1 16th of the size of the world. Start by enabling scaling texture lock. This will ensure that any faces that have textures applied to them will be scaled correctly when we shrink everything down. Press Ctrl M to open the transform tool which we'll use to set the scale globally. Choose the Scale Radio button, and under X, Y, and Z values, type in 0 0.0625. 
This is the decimal value of 1 16th. Click OK, and everything has been shrunken down. We now just want to move this off to this side, and let's fly over there in our 3D view. We can see that since we have scaling texture lock enabled, these windows have retained the correct scale when they've been shrunken down. Just to make sure it doesn't get us later, let's go ahead and disable the scaling texture lock. We now need to build a hollow box around of our 3D skybox. Let's grab the tool skybox texture. Now with the brush tool, let's create a hollow box around our 3D skybox. We can easily do this by creating a regular brush that will contain our whole 3D skybox. Now go to tools and make hollow. In the dialog box that opens, type negative 16 and hit OK. This will automatically hollow the box out for us. And inside, we're left with our 3D skybox. Now we want to select our miniature city here and press Ctrl T to turn everything here into a function detail. We do not want anything in our 3D skybox to split viz leaves. There is no reason for it, and it will just increase your compile time by a large amount. Let's click apply and cancel and we can compile the level to see what that looks like in game. Here we are in game and we can see off in the distance that we have my two skyscrapers. Over behind T-Spawn there are the office buildings that I've created along with the general structures behind them. There's the small antenna that's part of this building but actually exists in the 3D skybox. We can see that the game engine favors objects in the real world over the 3D skybox. It's very easy to notice that the world is rendering on top of this antenna. But when viewed from below, we really can't tell that that's an issue due to the fact that the world can't render in front of this antenna because of how it's placed. If we fly over to B site, this brush here that continues this building is extended and matches perfectly up with the world brush that's inside of our level. Bullet holes will appear on this brush since it's part of the level, but not on the 3D skybox brushes. You also may notice that lighting information on objects in the 3D skybox are not as detailed. This is since they are shrunken down to 1 16th of the size, they receive 1 16th of the lighting information. If you want objects to have high lighting detail, you may want to consider leaving them in your real world and then optimizing around them. Now we'll add fog to our level. Fog is a great way to add an additional amount of depth to your map while making it look great at the same time. We only need to use one entity to create fog in our map and that is an Envy Fog Controller. Let's place a new entity and change its class to Envy Fog Controller. I'll position it right next to my other global entities here. And then I want to give it a name of at fog controller. Under the flags tab, I want to check master since this will be the master fog controller. If you only have one fog controller, you don't need to set this. I'm planning to have two fog controllers, one for the outside and one for inside the metro area. If we go back to class info, there's a few settings that I want to set here. We can set the primary fog color. I want to choose a darkish blue color. Now I'll set my fog start and fog end. The distance between these two is a fade to the maximum density of our fog controller. At 500 units, our fog will start and it will slowly increase up to 2000 units to which it will be at maximum density of one. We are able to tweak these values inside of the game. So for now, I'm just going to set some values that I think might be close to what I want and I can tweak them later. I'll set my starting distance to be 400 and my fog ending distance to be 3500. I'll also set the max density to 0.7. We need to make sure that we check fog enable yes. Let's compile this and take a look at it in game. Here we are in game. We can see the fog off in the distance. The bluish purple color that I chose was actually abysmal, so we can tweak that now in game. If we open up our console and type fog UI and hit enter, we'll get the fog panel. If we check fog override, this will allow us to override our fog settings. If I set the values here for start and end of 400, 3500, and then set the RGB values as well, we'll have the same fog colors that we have set on our NV fog controller. We can now use these sliders to adjust the value of the fog in real time. I think I've settled on these fog values. If we look 
in our 3D skybox, everything is currently black. This is because the fog UI has enabled skybox fog. If we tick enable and then set the same values here that are set for the above values, the fog will carry on into our 3D skybox and it looks quite good. Now what I want to do is mark down these settings inside of my fog UI. Now I can apply these settings onto my NV fog controller. We also want to apply these settings onto our sky camera. If we click map and entity report, we'll get a list of all the entities in our level. If we scroll down, we'll find sky camera. If we click on that, it will select it. We want to set these same fog settings here as well. Now let's add another fog controller into our level to basically disable the fog inside a CT spawn. CT spawn is inside, so it doesn't really make sense for there to be fog there. Let's select our existing fog controller and shift drag to make a copy. Let's open its properties and first go to the flags tab and disable master. Under class info, we want to change its name. I'll add slave to the end of it. To essentially disable the fog, I'm going to set the max density to be zero. This means that the max density of the fog is nothing, so when this controller is active, fog will be completely removed. We now want to set the interpolate time. The interpolate time is the amount of time that it takes for the fog controller to transition to itself. This is essentially a fade from whatever you were in to what you are now in. I'll set this to four. We also need to go to our master fog controller and set the interpolate time there as well. I'm going to create one more fog controller just so we can have a little fun and see exactly how this is working. Since the effect inside a CT spawn is very subtle, we can use this to better picture how the fog is being switched. I'll change this one's name from slave to meme. Now let's fly over to CT spawn. We need to create a volume brush here that will tell the game when to transition between the two fog controllers. Let's select our texture browser and do a search for fog. Select the purple fog volume texture. We now need to create a volume brush for where the fog should begin to transition. This is one single brush and it does clip through other brushes, but this is all right since it's going to be turned into an entity. Press Ctrl T and let's change its class to Fog Volume. Under Fog Name, let's select Fog Controller Slave from the dropdown. Let's fly over to A Spawn and this is where we'll prepare to melt some steel beams with our meme Fog Controller. I'll create a copy of this brush here, press Ctrl T to change its texture. Once again, making it a fog volume. Change the fog name to meme and we're ready to do it. Let's run the map and check that out in game. Here we are in game, we can see that we have the slight fog on the brushes back here. If we fly over to CT spawn, it's very easy to see the fog on these inside walls since they're so dark. When I enter the fog volume here, after a few seconds, all the fog is removed from the level. When I leave the volume, all of the fog will start to come back into existence. If we're ready to start being like Twitch chat and dropping dank memes, we can go over to A site and slowly but surely, everything gets really, really red. I hope you enjoyed placing a few happy little buildings inside of our 3D skybox in our level, along with creating some fog controllers that switch between them inside of our level. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate it, and don't forget to join us tomorrow for the next one.